Hi, welcome to Dark Dragon Does Math. Today we are we are doing things. We're doing sh volume and surface area and learning about spheres and cones and other pointy things and cylinder. I it's going to be a great time. I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but the truth is this is the third time I'm uh, recording this. So I'm hoping it goes well this time. I'm actually freehanding it because I'm not talented enough to create the notes that I want here. So instead, I'm just going to draw it. Um, and I'm hoping that it comes out clearly enough for you to see it. Uh, obviously, I want you to follow along and do all that good stuff. And listen because I might not, and I definitely won't write down everything I say. So listen closely, follow along. Um, if you can make, if you could follow along and draw what I draw, it's going to be great notes. If you can't, well, we'll see what we can do. So, anyways, so the first thing I'm talking about is a cylinder. Now, we're all familiar with the cylinder. That's where we have a, basically, it's a, like a tube. Um, a cup is a cylinder. A can is a cylinder. we got a circle on top, a circular base. And it connects to a circular base on top. So it's a circular base, circular base. Um, the really important pieces that I need to glean from this, I need to know the top is a circle, and all circles have a radius. There's a circumference, but also that's not necessarily important yet. Um, they also have the height of the cylinder. Um, and I want you to, we're going to call this piece right here, the, the middle tube part, that is the curved slash lateral surface. Um, so if I say curved surface, you know what I'm talking about, or if I say lateral surface, you know what I'm talking about, because there's a good chance I'll say both. Um, so that's what, it, what a cylinder basically looks like. If we want to talk about the net of a cylinder, um, so first off, we have, I'm going to start with the base on top. So just we have that circle on top that's still there. So we're going to lay that down. So obviously it has a radius. Um, but the second thing, the harder part to see, is the curved surface. How do I flatten that? So I'm, imagine me kind of peeling right here. I'm going to draw that. And I'm going to slowly peel it apart and lay it flat. So it ends up looking something like this, but obviously better. So we've gone from a curved tube and we're laying it flat basically. So and the interesting parts about this is this length right here is still H, uh, but this length, the 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 length of the longitude the, is the same as the circumference of the circle. So um, if we remember uh, our areas circ and circumference of circles, circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. So 2 pi r. So that's what this length is right here. And then, of course, we have the other cylinder circle base. Um, so that's what the net kind of looks like. Uh, remember this is the curved surface. Just write that in there. And this is what we call the base. Alright. Um, so those are, that's kind of what it looks like, what the net looks like, the important parts. I want to talk about quickly the um, the formulas for cylinders that we're going to use. So we're, we're going to find the volume and surface area of all of these shapes. So the volume is like basically a cylinder is a prism. Um, so remember rectangular prisms. It's the base times the height. Triangular prisms. Area of a triangle times the height. And we called the base a big B and the height H. The same is true for the cylinder except for instead of our base being a rectangle or a triangle our base is a circle. And so remember the area of a circle is the same thing. It's it's pi r squared. So pi r squared is the area of the base times h, which is our height. That is the volume of a cylinder. Pretty simple. 
Um, now the surface area is trickier. So that comes from our net here. So the surface area is the same as these two bases. So two base times or plus the area of the curved surface. So uh, two times the base plus the curved surface. Uh, so basically this is two times the base was a circle. So two pi r squared plus the curved surface area. Now that curved surface is a rectangle. So rectangles, the way we find the area of those is uh, base times height. Uh, so this times this. So it's actually 2 pi r times h. Remember, this was the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi r h. And that's how I get the um, surface area of the circle. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Um, all right, and then we have cross sections uh, too that are relatively important. So you can see them from here what they are. Uh, it's but so I want to talk about just quickly what a parallel cross section looks like. So a parallel cross section means if I were to t look at the cylinder and take a cross section, which, what does that mean? I guess I should define that. A cross section is when you basically cut the shape. Um, imagine a laser going through the shape. And what is the cut look like? So if I were to cut a shape right, if I were to cut the cylinder right through the middle, and it's parallel to the two bases, what I end up with is a circle. That is a circle. If we look at it, it's a, um, now if I did a perpendicular cross section, this time I'm going to cut the circle straight straight down. So, like, and, <laughs> and what what that actually ends up looking like is a rectangle. So a perpendicular cross section of a circle is a rect of a cylinder, excuse me, perpendicular cro cross section of a cylinder is a rectangle and the parallel cross section of a cylinder is a circle. You know, saying those words is harder than you think. It's a bunch of different shapes at once. Anyways, so that's that's kind of the overview of the cylinder. All we're doing for it, let's do the cone. And just like the cylinder, the cone is very much a um, related to a similar shape, the pyramid. Where a pyramid, we have triangular pyramids, we have rectangular pyramids, we have, um, I don't know, hexagonal pyramids, where there's a base and it's of a shape, and then in all of the sides come to a nice little point. Well, in the cone, that nice little, there's, think of it as the base is a circle, so it has an infinite number of sides. So, what I'm drawing here, this right here is the height. Um, this right here is the radius of the cone. Uh, and notice that it meets, the always meet at a right angle. So the height always meets the radius, well, the, the bottom of the cone at a right angle. Um, this on the side, this length right here, that length right there, that is the slant height. That becomes important when we're doing the surface area. And it's actually, we call it L. So. I don't know why. I should know why, but I don't. So uh, don't ask me. I <laughs> I might look it up later. I don't know at the at the timing of this video. So that's a slant height, um, and also just like the cylinder, we're going to call that the curved slash lateral surface area. Okay, talking about the little curved section there. So that's kind of the pieces of a cone. Um, to actually lay it out, 
It's quite interesting. So I'm going to take that side and peel it just like I did, but it actually just kind of looks like this, where it's like a like a section of a circle, really. So part of a circle, and I, my drawing will not be to scale or perfect. Or so this is the curved surface. I am. I just the curfus. <laughs> I, I really just wrote that. That is the curved surface or the curfus. I'm gonna leave that. That's hilarious. Uh, and then the that right there is the slant height, and the circle here is the circle base. So we have the radius here. Notice nowhere on my um, net. This is my net. Have I written H? Because there is no H. There's no way to to show that here. Because really, what H is is it's like the inside. Like imagine there was no circle on the bottom. It's a hollow hollow part of it. It has no. It's not touching anything on the surface. So there's no way to add it um, to my my net here. Um, so the uh, the volume is interesting it's actually kind of like the base but the the how to find the volume of all pointy things is actually one third times the base times the height so it's like the cylinder but divided by three so imagine it, you you kind of cut a third out you went to the top of the cylinder and you pulled out a third and it's a, if you could see my brain, it'd be obvious what I'm saying, but I don't think it is. So it's it's really just like a cylinder, but it's a third of it. So you find it the exact same way, and then divide by three. So this is the base is pi r squared, which is the area of a circle, times the height. And notice that's height, not l height, times one third. So one third pi r squared. Um, that's the volume. Sorry, it's sideways. I didn't notice. Uh, so one third pi r squared is the um, volume of a cone. The surface area is a little bit trickier. It's like uh, so. First off, we only have one base. That's easier to to explain. So we only have one base, which is nice. So that one base is the circle. That's pi r squared plus the curved area, the kerfus. Um, so to find the area of that, that's easy. That's pi r squared. Now this is a little bit trickier. It's kind of like a triangle. Um, so where the triangle would be base times height divided by 2. Um, but it gets a little bit more messy than that. Like Remember, so this is like the circumference, right? This of the circle. It is the circumference of the circle. So that length right there is legitimately um, 2 pi r. So actually, it really isn't that bad. So imagine this is a triangle. So to find the area of the triangle, you would do 2 pi r times l, and then you would divide it by 2. Because the triangles, remember, we base on height divided by 2. So that's, that's really what we're doing here. It's 2 pi r times l divided by 2 so it, it ends up how about I just write it down so 1 half 2 pi r times L and then this 1 half times 2 cancels out so it actually ends up being pi r squared plus pi r L hooray so this is the surface area and this is the volume and again we'll get into those a lot more later so just real quickly the cross section so if I have a parallel cross section to the base that means if I were to cut the cone at any point as going up it's always going to be just circles they're just going to be smaller so circle 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 parallel cross sections make circles and um, a, a perpendicular cross section they're going to make triangles right so we imagine there's a triangle in there it's, I just drew a triangle to kind of show what I meant there's a per perpendicular to the base makes triangles 
And I think that's it for cones. Um, we'll talk about more cool stuff that cones do later when we get to actually playing around with the questions. But that's the basics of cones. And finally, we have spheres, which are relatively easy because they're so complicated. Sounds funny, doesn't it? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, spheres are obviously what balls look like. Uh, basketballs. <laughs> Uh, basketballs, globes, um, baseballs, uh, globes unless you're Kyrie, right? <laughs> I'm hilarious. So it's basically a circle, and the way I, I draw um, a sphere is like this, where this is my radius. Um, and that's really the only important part about it, besides, like, you know, the whole thing is a lateral surface. And that looks really funny because of the way my thing is. I imagine that, but a perfectly brown sphere. Anyways, in, in hemisphere, just so you know, the exists two. That's what half of a circle looks like, right? So, like a circular base, hemisphere. Um, hemi means, that's a terrible picture, um, hemi means half, so it's basically a hemisphere is half of a circle. So next time somebody's bragging about their Dodge Ram, they're like, it's got a hemi, be like, so you got half an engine? <laughs> um, the net of these is terrible. Um, and not useful. So, you know, we know what baseballs look like. All right? Or tennis balls. We get the, the stitches, right? That's a, that's a really wonderful baseball. Now, imagine you pulling apart the stitches. The net of spheres kind of look like this. Except there's two of those. Like lumpy barbells or something. That's unuseful. Um, I don't... This is no shape I've ever seen or know how to find the area of. So this is actually what the net of a sphere looks like. And it's completely unuseful. Unuseful. At least to us. Uh, scientists, people who, mathematicians, they, they have to deal with this stuff. They know how to pull that apart and make it a lot better. And there's some calculus that goes involved with it. But for us, not useful, we'll say, to seventh grade. So we don't play with the net. You don't ever have to draw the net. I'm just showing you what it looks like. Um, and then obviously the cross section is a circle, right? Because if we were to cut this at any point, we we're just making a circle. Um, so great. Um, so. And then, obviously, we want to talk about the surface area and volume. I do not want to explain either one of these because they involve calculus uh, or very weird proofs that I'd, are too long for this. So that just know the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared. So, and, and that's really it for the spheres. So, like I said, spheres are really simple, but also very, very complicated. Um, and so, as long as you know what they look like, we're all good. And that concludes the video. Math!